Okay guys, in this video, we're going to go over the vacuum lines, the routing, how the system works, what's its purpose. We've got, we got a fair amount of stuff to cover here. And before, like I said, uh, before we start digging in here, uh, what I like to do is uh, take it from the beginning. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to sit down at the table. We're going to draw up some stuff here. We're going to show the routing of these lines, how they work. Tube, and this vacuum lines tubing all over this engine. So I think if we take this thing and break it down from the, you know, break it down into the simplest levels, uh, break, and then we'll build it up, see what each component does, how it works. And in the process, I want you guys to be thinking about how you would troubleshoot this. Uh, you know, so once you know how the system works, then uh, you can come up with some of your ideas. I'd like to hear what y'all's uh, thoughts are. I have my own thoughts, but I'd like to see what y'all think. Okay, so let's get started and uh, let's draw this thing up. And I'm going to, I can show you a diagram of this, and I probably will at the end. And um, the electrical is interrelated with the vacuum. It's kind of hard to talk about just the vacuum system and, and totally keep out the electrical because the electrical is in there too, the solenoid valves. And so it's going to be a little bit, I think we're going to do a little mixture of both. Uh, so we're going, to, we're going to see how that will work out here. So let's get started and uh, let's get uh, drawing this thing up. Okay guys, we're going to talk about the uh, operation of this uh, secondary air uh, pump system. Now this may apply to other cars too, but this is specifically for the 2001 Volkswagen Jetta GLX 2.8 liter. It's got the VR6 engine. Now as you remember, this has got a P0411 code, secondary air pump flow not detected. Now here's the purpose of this uh, um, air pump system and also how it works. So during the cold start from 59 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 15 degrees Celsius, and I converted this over for our metric friends out there, to 95 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 35 degrees C, via the coolant temperature sensor, the secondary air system blows air behind the exhaust valves for 65 seconds. Now this enriches the exhaust with oxygen and starts afterburning, thereby reducing the catalytic converter warm-up phase. Now as you may know, on a cold start, the engine is running richer. So what's happening is this here, pump is blowing uh, fresh air which has oxygen in it into the on top of the exhaust valves gets mixed in with exhaust gases and in return what's happening here this is going to actually heat up the uh, the exhaust gases coming in, out of the uh, exhaust manifold now this here hotter gases is going to help heat up this catalytic converter so it can start working faster and in turn it can start reducing emissions so what's the whole purpose of this just to reduce emissions has nothing to do with any performance issues you know or getting anything out of it so that's all it's for it's just for emissions okay now we're going down to the next thing here and it says control passes from the Matronic engine control module J220 across the secondary air injection pump relay J299 to the secondary air injection solenoid valve N112 and combination valve. In addition, on every subsequent start of the engine up to a maximum of 185 degrees F, which is 35 degrees C, the secondary air system will idle for 5 seconds after a delay of 20 seconds and then the self-diagnosis is run. So even though the car is warmed up every time you start this engine up then this here pump is going to run for 5 seconds 20 seconds after you start the engine. Then the computer will do, do its uh, diagnosis on the system. It'll check the airflow, it'll check it electrically, make sure everything looks fine. So, and it'll do that up to 185 degrees. Now, once you pass that, then this here system is not going to be activated by the computer. Now, one other thing that I did is I put down here a little thought of my own. Now, this here system does not have any kind of flow sensor or a sensor of some sort looking for air pressure, air flow, anything of the, like that. It's uh, detected by the upstream oxygen sensor. And what it's doing is, when you put this fresh air in there, which has this uh, higher oxygen content, then this here O2 sensor is going to see that. So it's going to see that leaner condition, and then the computer knows that the system is working. 
So that's basically the system in a nutshell. So let's go in and start looking at the diagrams for the for the vacuum lines here and we'll start looking at these uh, individual components. All right, let's get started on drawing this here vacuum system here for this thing and the valves and all that good stuff. First thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna start off drawing the intake manifold, okay? I'm gonna call him intake, all right? Now, this up here, this is gonna be where the front of the car is. Okay, this over here where I'm gonna draw these ports, got one, got two, got three, got four. Now these four ports are over on the driver's side. Okay, oops. All right, let me come in a little bit more for you guys there. All right, now this port at the very back here, okay, this is going to the LDP. LDP is leak detection pump that's used for the fuel evap to uh, detect any leaks that's on the system. Okay. Also, let's go to this one right down here. This one, that port is going to be going to the purge solenoid. That's also for the evap system. Okay, now the port that's right up above that, that port is going to be going to the brake booster. Okay, now this port right here, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to a T. Okay, and let's just say T. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come off of this T that's gonna be feeding the fuel pressure regulator. All right, so let's put him down in there. Okay, and I'm just gonna say regulator. Okay, now next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna come off of this here T and we're gonna be feeding a check valve. Now the check valve is going to have a black band. You'll see a black band that's on there. This black band is going to be pointing back to the vacuum source. Okay. Now let's call him check valve. Now remember, remember a check valve is going to allow the flow to go this way, but it will not allow it to go that way. All right, let's continue on. Now our vacuum hose is gonna come down. He's supposed to go to a, another T, okay? All right, now we're gonna come out of this side of the T. Now we're gonna feed secondary air injection solenoid. All right, this is nothing but a valve. It's normally closed, okay? I'll go ahead and put my windings in there. Now, as you know, as you know with any device, you got to have a plus and a minus. So, here's our plus. That's going to be 12 volts. Here's our negative. That's going back to the EC, <clears throat> ECM. Okay, and that's going to be ground side switch, of course. So, let's put him like so. All right. Now, our vacuum is going to continue on through, and let me just write up here, this is a normally closed valve, meaning the valve is going to be closed when it's not energized, and then when it's energized, it's going to open, and then this here is going to allow this passageway between the inlet and the outlet to open up. So, let me go up here, say solenoid, um, let me do this. Let's call it secondary air injection solenoid. Okay. All right. Let's move on over. Okay. Let's look at, uh, let's see where this here, this here T 
it's going to continue down all right it's going to come on down and let's stop him about right there he's going to feed another T okay now this T coming out of here this port coming off of this T is going to feed a little container a vacuum reservoir okay there you go sorry about that so now you can see where that's going to go now out of this one over here we're going to feed another solenoid okay again the solenoid is just like the previous one this is normally closed has a winding okay let's put a little iron core in there okay one side is going to plus 12 volts okay the other side right here is going to go back to the ECM it's the ground of course and this is ground side switch okay now this solenoid right here is called an intake manifold changeover valve or changeover solenoid okay that right there has to do it doesn't have anything to do with uh, the secondary air injection but because we have these vacuum lines it's all interconnected we're going to actually look at that too but basically what this does is uh, and let me finish this on up and then I'll tell you what this here does since we got it in there anyway what it's going to do is going to feed a rotary valve okay I'll draw it like that and I'm going to call this uh, uh, rotary valve of course the rotary valve is vacuum actuated okay and what it does is if you look up on the top of your upper plenum there you'll see a uh, you'll see this valve it's got a little linkage there this linkage will pull 90 degrees it will pull down it'll turn a, a, a shuttle valve is basically what I'd say it is Volkswagen calls it, uh, calls it a intake manifold changeover barrel and basically what it does is uh, when you get around 2,500 to 4,000 RPM, then this here vacuum, uh, this rotary valve will get actuated by the ECM, of course, through this here solenoid. And it will turn this valve 90 degrees and it just re and it's putting in the, uh, the runners, the intake manifold runners. They're shorter and longer length, so it will actually bring in different lengths of runners so that you get a higher performance uh, when you get at those higher RPMs that I mentioned. Okay. Now, so we got that. So let's continue on. Let's follow out to where this here is going to go. All right. So this is going to go down to a another valve. Okay. Now this valve is called the combi valve. Okay. Combi, C O M B I valve. Okay. Now, now let's draw. Let's draw up, and then there's a little bit more part to this. But let's draw up our uh, air pump. We haven't drawn that up yet. Now here's our pump. Okay. It's a motor. It's an electric motor. It's not. It's not driven by a belt. And it's an impeller in there. So when the electric motor turns, there's an impeller that it turns and it's bringing in. There's this here plastic tube and it goes back to the upper part of the air filter. Okay. Now, this here air is being pulled from the air filter. Okay. Then we have an outlet. We have another plastic tube. Okay, air is being blown out under slight air pressure. Okay, now it comes, and I'm just going to draw this as a, you know, just as a line. 
that's coming back into the combi valve. <clears throat> now remember the combi valve is normally closed until it gets actuated by the vacuum here. Now when this here valve gets actuated then this airflow is going to come through this here combi valve and it's going to blow into the exhaust passageways or right op over top of the exhaust valves. I'm going to say exhaust passage. How about that? So then when it goes through and gets into the uh, exhaust passage, this uh, airflow is going to be sensed by the O2 sensor, upstream O2 sensor that is, and then the computer will know that the airflow got blown through there. And there's a whole complete system. So let me back out just a little bit so you can see this thing a little bit. Okay. Let me push you up right there. Okay. So basically, here's our whole complete vacuum system right here. Okay. Goes through. So the part of this here secondary air injection is this component here. So we have to be, we have to, uh, we also got to check this thing electrically. Remember this valve is normally closed, but then when it's energized, then this passageway will open up. Okay. So we have to check to make sure this here solenoid valve is working. Okay, another component is this one here, this combi valve. We also have to be ensure that this right here is working correctly. Okay, that this passageway through this valve is, is uh, going to open. Also, we have this here secondary air pump. Let me just write that on there. Secondary air pump. Okay, and that's the whole complete system. Now this part up in here, right, you can see this is a fuel pressure regulator, okay. Even though it has a vacuum line there, it has nothing to do with anything as far as the secondary air injection. Of course, being with all these vacuum lines here, and we're going to check all this stuff anyway. So we're going to check that. Now again, this right here has nothing to do with the secondary air injection, but because it's there, we're going to check it anyway. You know, we got all these vacuum lines. Okay, so now that I draw that diagram up, I think that's probably, I think you guys can understand pretty much how this works. It's not that, it's not that complicated. You know, a lot of times if you see a drawing, electrical, mechanical, uh, vacuum routing, you know, a lot of times it's uh, just draw the thing, redraw the thing up so you can lay it out yourself so you can see something. Okay, now I'm going to show you the uh, I'm going to show you the system here, the secondary air uh, pump system and all from the Volkswagen manual, so you can get an idea what that looks like. So let me slide this one out of the way, and let's put this one in there. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see this. Okay. All right. Now you can see you can see that they got. Uh, this is an exploded view, but a lot of times when you look at things like this, it, it makes it kind of hard to figure out what's going on here. You know, you can see right here, here's your vacuum line, but it's a breakaway point. I was like, okay, where is that go? It goes here, goes around here. Okay, now there's a T, and then where does that go? And then you come down, you can see where it goes. Then it goes over, no, no, you see? Then there's a check valve in here. So. It's just easier for me just to draw it up. I think probably you can agree too that it's a little bit easier to draw this stuff up. Here's a combi valve. Here's that. Here's the outlet right here off of this pump. See it comes around, comes around. There's the outlet. Here's the inlet on the air pump. Goes up here, goes up here. Of course, it don't tell you show you where it goes to. As far as this side of the air uh, hose here, uh, I got this information from the other and actually looking at the car. Um, right here is the here is that uh, secondary air injection solenoid. Now this one over here is another solenoid, but that was for the intake manifold changeover valve. Is what this one is. But you can see how all of these here vacuum lines are all interconnected. So, like I said, while we're there, we'll just take a look at it. Okay. So I think at this point, let me go ahead. We'll close this video out. I'm sure it's getting a little bit long. And the next video we'll go over the we'll go over the electrical. We'll look at the wiring diagrams and we'll go over that a little bit. Okay? So appreciate you guys watching.